My name is Christoph Eisinger. I'm a program manager on our security and compliance teams. Welcome to this Microsoft Communication Compliance Scaling video about better together with Microsoft Teams. Let's get started. Here, let's start from the beginning. What you're looking at is our Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. And you can see we got a number of solutions, including a, a widget that gives us some insights that we might have some, some potential communication risks. To investigate and remediate those communication risks, let's get into Microsoft 365 Communication Compliance, as you've shown on the left-hand side. So I've clicked on that. Here you can see the solutions. And you can see we have some number of policies that we've configured for those uh, recordings and pre-populated with data. Now it's collapsed the left navigation pane so we can really show you the full solution. What I'll do is I'll start from scratch and show you how you can configure a policy to just monitor Teams messages. So to do so, I'll just click on Create Policy and you'll see the fourth option is Custom Policy and select that. And from there on, I get a simple wizard that walks me through creating such policy. You just need to give it a name. And then next, you need to decide who are you going to analyze? Is it a specific group within your organization or is it all your employees? By default, all users. The next thing you need to decide is who's going to review the messages that potentially match the condition that I'll set later on. And that's what those options are. I've got Adele. My administrator and Alex are going to be privy to those messages. Next, you need to decide what channels or communication types you want to monitor. Again, the goal is to only look at Teams. So you can see here we got a lot of options and I've unchecked everything only to select Microsoft Teams. Last but not least, you need to decide what patterns am I looking for. Now, in this example, let's pretend that this policy is to monitor for code of conduct violations. So to do so, what I'll do is I click on Add Conditions, and I'll pick the first option, which is Content Match uh, any of those classifiers, and that invoke that side panel. You can see we've delivered standard models to detect things like harassment, threat to others, or threat to oneself. There's also profanity. And we also recently uh, launched the ability to detect what we call adult content, whether it's uh, nudity or uh, pornographic images. We can also detect gory images. So again, think of all of those accruing to fostering a culture of safety and inclusion in your workforce. So I can just click add on all those conditions. And we, I can also augment those machine learning detection with, let's say, I do have a list of taboo words that I know have no place in the workplace or definitely no place in Teams. And I can upload such a dictionary. So in this case, I've uploaded one called taboo words. And I can also add that. So basically, what we're saying is either it detects one of those machine learning patterns that we've delivered or our image detection, or it matches one of those words that should have no place in the workplace. The next thing you need to do is define the review percentage, and which is that slider at the bottom. If it's 100%, then any message match you will be, you'll get to investigate and remediate. If you go any less than that, that means if it was at 10%, that means only one out of 10 will be surfaced for investigation. That means there's potentially nine other uh, risky message that are floating out there in Microsoft Teams. Then from there on, it's, it's pretty simple. I just hit next. It's got a recap of all those settings that you put in and just hit create policy and voila, in a couple of minutes, you're up and running. It takes about an hour for our policy to be fully configured and deployed in your tenant and up to 24 hours to start capturing team messages. Now that I've showed you how to configure a, a policy to monitor for bad behavior on teams, uh, let's show you a policy in, in action. So in this case, I already had configured a policy called offensive language. And here we give you uh, high level stats on, on how many matches, violations we've detected. So let's dive straight into investigating those violations. So what I've done here, because this policy actually was looking for different type of messages, I put a filter just for teams. And there's a couple of things I wanna call out. So here you're seeing a message from Grady and, and that has been sent, in this case, to another employee, Megan. The first message basically signify what we call harassment. And the second message signify what we call threat. 
And again, what I want to stress here is we're using machine learning because none of those words that are in that, those messages are per se profanity, very legitimate dictionary words. But the reason they've been flagged is, you know, they're targeted at someone else. And that's when suddenly you cross the line and becomes harassment or a threat and so forth. The other thing I want to call out is we know Teams is pretty chatty and we're reconstructing that so that from you as an investigator, typically you'd be in the shoe of, uh, let's say, human resources if it's code of conduct. It helps you have that full context of Grady's interaction with that other person. The other thing we're doing is notice there's a little orange banner here at the top of the message and we say pattern detected in the past 30 days. Grady has sent three messages matching this policy's conditions to Megan. So again, it signifies that maybe I've got two messages from August 27th, but there was another one not too long ago. And again, typically the definition, for instance, of bullying is repeat harassment. So that could signify a much more severe behavior that you, know, you need to handle right away because this is not acceptable in your organization. The other thing we're doing is to get additional context of that person is you can click on user history and that tab will give you both the matches that we've detected for this policy and also past remediation action. So pretend another one of my colleagues from Newman Resources has dealt with Grady a month ago, six months ago, a year ago. We get that full context. So maybe six months ago, we already told that person this was not acceptable. He was notified. We notify his manager. And then he's doing it again. So again, the idea is, as you're investigating those violations, really make sure you get all the tools or all the information at your disposal so that you can make the proper um, remediation action. And that leads us into all the things that you can see on the menu here. There's different things I can do. I can notify the individual. I can escalate to another reviewer or I can pass that to our legal team. I'll show you specifically a remediation action that we've just recently launched specifically for Teams, and that is the ability to remove team messages. So this message to Megan, or it could have been multiple messages, I can easily click on remove message. And what this is gonna do is gonna remove the message so not only the sender doesn't see it, but more importantly, the recipient doesn't see it either, and limiting the risk on the exposure. You can imagine maybe if it's one-to-one -one chat, maybe it's not, it's only two people, uh, but as you can imagine, if it's a if it's a message in a team channel with hundreds of people or thousands of people, it's really important to take down that message as quickly as possible, so no other students or no other colleagues sees that message. So simply click on that remove message, and then you know it takes a few seconds. It notifies me that the message has been removed, and here's what that sender sees. In this case, Grady, you can see the second message. It said this message was blocked. What can I do? And it gives you insights with a policy tip that's like, hey, this is not acceptable in your organization. And then this is the other side of the coin. This is what Megan would see. And again, it says this message was blocked due to your organization's policy. So again, it notifies the end users why a message was removed so that hopefully going forward, you know, we've learned that this is not an acceptable behavior and they can move on. Let me show you another remediation action that we can do. But before that, you know, this is a message where it actually detected what we call adult content. Um, so think of nudity or porn that, again, are not acceptable in my tenant. So I'm not going to show you that image. But what's important is for that specific type of violations, you might have a very specific processes. It's not as simple as removing the message or notifying the user this is not acceptable. And to do so, I want to introduce the ability to leverage what we call Power Automate. Power Automate. For those of you that are not familiar with it, it used to be you call Microsoft Flow, gives you the ability to create your own custom processes. And in the context of communication compliance, it helps you build your own custom processes to deal with violators. So let's show you how easy it is to configure a process and, and kick off a workflow when you do see such patterns. So we click Power Automate. Here we've already given you a template to get started. And you can see I already have two templates that I've created. But let's show you how to create a template. It's as easy as creating on a template. And I click Continue. And here you start getting the richness. Now, this is a very basic example, but you can uh, imagine the richness. In this case, you know, I'd say, I need to automatically notify that person's manager. Or maybe I need to notify my HR systems and open a ticket because this is a very severe violation. 
you can imagine, you know, the sky is the limit. Whatever is your process, you can model that in, in Power Automate. And then once I've defined that flow, typically uh, the next step is just to run it. And it'll grab that, that metadata associated with that message. And in this case, it'll notify the managers and, and blah, blah, blah. So again, super excited to introduce Power Automate to really take it to the, to the last mile and help you tailor your processes on how you deal with those violations day in, day out. Now, wrapping up, again, I've just showed you how you can use communication compliance to make sure that the rollout uses of teams abides by your corporate policy. Now, obviously, I talked about code of conduct violations, but you can also use it for regulatory compliance. And that's a plug to the video I did earlier on how you can use communication compliance to, to make sure you don't step out of line with respect to your favorite regulator. Now that wraps up the demo. A couple of key things I want you to think about. As you're rolling out communication compliance, some of the learnings from customers is that this is a team effort and it cannot just be carried by IT. So for instance, depending on the use case, but if it's code of conduct, definitely have human resources involved, have legal, have your corporate team involved right from the beginning to make sure you get those processes laid out and all the stakeholders are at the table. Wrapping up, I've demonstrated how Microsoft Teams and communication compliance are better together to foster a culture of safety and inclusion in this day and age as people are working remotely. Now, there's a couple things specifically we want you to do. Configure policies, investigate and remediate message, and give us feedback. There's a number of links in this slide that you can consume, whether it's white papers or further details step-by-step -step to get started. With that, Thank you very much for watching this killing video. Happy Ignite 2020 and have a great day.